When it comes to live streaming, there are a ton of products out there that will help you have a great stream, but what do you actually need and what's just a big waste of money? Well, I'm gonna show you the different types of live stream setups out there so you can decide for yourself exactly what it is that you need for your needs. I'm going to talk about the actual equipment involved with each setup and the advantages and disadvantages of each setup. And we're starting right now with the easiest way that you can get started on your very first live stream, which is mobile live streaming. Live streaming with your mobile devices is as easy and as basic as it can possibly get, but mobile live streaming isn't for everyone. If you're new to live streaming and you just wanna see how it goes, then mobile might be a good fit for you. Or if you're somebody that doesn't have a computer or a microphone or the whole other setup that you need, then in that particular case, mobile live streaming might be a good fit for you also. In terms of equipment needed when it comes to mobile live streaming, all you need is your mobile device. And if you have any modern mobile device, the camera on it is gonna be pretty spectacular. And as long as you have good lighting, it's probably gonna look pretty good. The advantages of this setup is that you probably already have a mobile device, so you don't have to buy anything. And since it is mobile, you can stream from pretty much anywhere you want as long as you have a good internet connection. However, mobile live streaming does come with limitations. For example, you can't dial in your scene as much as you might want to just because of the lens limitations. Internet stability is always going to be an issue, even with the other setups that we're gonna be talking about, but with mobile, it's more extreme. Interacting with your live viewers is also really difficult on a mobile device because you have have the part of the screen that you're on and then you have the part of the screen that is chat and everything's just overlaid on top of everything else and it's just not a great experience. And then we've got the big elephant in the room which is your battery. When you're streaming from a mobile device you're always going to have to deal with the battery unless you're somewhere that you can plug it in and stream while it's plugged in. But then even if you add any accessories to it for audio then it can still be a challenge because you need that port. And of course with a mobile device your audio can be less than ideal so if you're streaming in a crowded place or really if the phone's just not close enough to you, then your audio is probably gonna sound a little bit more rough than you'd probably like. For me, I look at mobile streaming as a great entry point into live streaming. I also look at mobile live streaming as a good solution to where if you do have a full studio, but you're like, hey, I'm on the road, I can't travel with all this stuff, then it just gives you that option to where you can still stream and still connect with your community. The next type of live streaming setup that we have is a basic single camera and microphone setup. This setup can carry you a very long way. This setup that I'm getting ready to describe is the setup that I used for years and it worked out great. And the only reason that I changed things up is because I nerd out on the tech. That's it. If it wasn't for that aspect of it, I would still have this particular setup. For this setup, you're going to need a camera that could be a cheap web camera, that could be a DSLR camera, it could even be a dedicated video camera. Whichever one of those that you have or whichever one is currently in your budget, that will be the right choice. For this, you're going to need to be able to connect everything. So you're going to need a computer. You're also going to need a microphone so that you can make sure that your audio sounds good. And if you're streaming at nighttime or during the daytime in your room, it doesn't have a lot of natural light coming in, then in that case, you also would need to get lights. And of course, you can stream with just your regular overhead lights that are in your room. But keep in mind, it's going to impact what your stream actually looks like. And in my opinion, that impact is in a negative way because the light isn't controlled in a way that's going to help you stand out in the frame. But if your budget does not allow for lights right now, it's okay. But just try to upgrade with some lights when you get the chance. It'll make everything look better. To be specific, when it comes to lighting, you're going to need at least one light that you put somewhere up in front of you. This is called a key light. It's advantageous to also have a fill light as well. So you have your main key light that is hitting you the brightest, and then you have the fill light that comes in and fills your shadows. You can get pretty decent lighting setups on Amazon these days for around $100, or you can even hack together your own kit if you want to. We actually have a video here on the StreamYard channel that shows you how to make your live streams look great in terms of the lighting. I'll link that video at the top of the screen and of course down in the description below. The advantages of having a setup like this are first, it's probably going to be the only setup that you'll ever need for a really long time. Unless of course you want to get fancy, then of course you can upgrade at that time. Another advantage that's important to a lot of people is that you can run a full professional looking live stream with just this setup. And another advantage with this setup is of course the price. So with this setup, you can get up and running for like two or three hundred dollars depending on the grade of things that you get, but it's relatively cheap to get into and have have a great looking stream for a really low cost. In my opinion, the single camera setup is the ideal setup. If you're somebody that's wanting to have a professional looking live stream, but you don't want to spend a bunch of money on a bunch of things that you don't really need, or if live streaming from a mobile device just isn't going to cut it for you. In fact, I use the same single camera setup for a really long time. And the reason for that is because I had this cheap under $100 Logitech C920 webcam, and I lit everything in a way and added some backlights and some color and things like that 
that and it made it kind of pop a little bit. And because of that, I would get compliments from people asking me what DSLR camera that I was using when in reality I was using a webcam that was under $100. So again, make sure you check out that lighting video that I mentioned earlier if you want to know how to better light your stuff because it can make a really big difference. And good lighting can make low cost gear look expensive. The next setup that we have is a professional multi-camera setup. If you want to have a setup that's pretty much limitless and also impresses people when they come into your live stream, this is the setup you're looking for. For this setup, the very first thing you're going to need is multiple cameras. So if you decide to go with two cameras, then you're going to need both of those. If you decide to go with eight, then of course you're going to need all eight cameras. For this setup, you're also going to need a camera switcher of some kind. Now, if you're a StreamYard user, you can actually do all this through USB for two different cameras. So you can have your main camera and then you can add a source for another one for an additional camera. But if you're wanting to program a camera switching sequence so that you can tell the software that this camera is on for this amount of time and then it's going to switch over here to this camera and then it's going to switch over to this camera after three seconds and so on, then in that case, the standard for that is something called an ATEM Mini. For the ATEMs, they come with software that helps you set up the camera switching automation, which is really cool, but they have smaller size ATEMs and then they have big ones. And depending on the one you decide to get, if you go that route, they also have the option to record directly into the box so that instead of having your stream go up and get compressed on the internet and then download it, you can pull it straight out of the box and then it's high quality just like your cameras. But the limitation with that box is you're only getting a 1920 by 1080 resolution and you're not able to do 4K. So it's important that you know that. But for pretty much everything, 1920 by 1080 is fine 99% of the time. For this type of setup, just like the setup that we mentioned earlier, you're going to need a microphone for this as well. The reason for that is it helps ensure that your voice comes through and sounds nice and crystal clear to match all the cool camera optics that you have going on. And if you want to level that up, you can also get an audio interface that will actually process your audio for you on the fly and it'll remove extra room noise. It'll add some dynamics to your voice. You can add equalization to your voice so you can just really make your voice sound really professional, almost like a radio broadcast. At the time of this recording, the go-to for that type of interface is a Rodecaster Pro. It has all of the different options in it for processing your voice. And in addition to that, you also have pad buttons on it where you can change your voice for fun and you can also add sound effects or audio bumpers and things like that for your audio branding side of your live stream. The advantages of this setup is that it allows you to do pretty much any type of stream that you want within reason, of course, but you can have guests on and everybody can have their own camera plus wide shots and extra shots and shots in whole different setups if you want to move from one part of the stream or one part of the studio to another. Like it really takes the rails off and lets you get really creative on your entire setup. Another advantage is that it's impressive. When people come into your live streams and you have the camera switching going on and everything looks and it sounds great, it just positions you in a certain way in their eyes, which is a pretty cool thing. Plus you're going to get a lot of great feedback. And depending on what your setup actually looks like in terms of what they're seeing, you can also use this as a way to make your entire setup look like it's something that you would see on TV. Even though that we all know that TV is fading away in favor of streaming, the idea is that it just gives you that nice professional look. The limitation of this type of setup is it can be expensive. And depending on how far you decide to go, it can be really expensive. If you're wanting to live stream some type of event or gathering, this type of setup can be a huge pain to take on the road. It's possible, but there's gonna be a lot of setup and breakdown in order to make it happen. And possibly a little bit more stress than you might sign up for. There's also the learning curve. Any technology comes with some type of learning curve attached to it. Live streaming setups are no different. So when you do go into the more advanced setups, there's a lot more to learn, which means that there's also a lot more places for things to go wrong. So, you know, it's not the easiest setup to have and to run, but once you get everything dialed in and you have to troubleshoot things just a few times, then it will become second nature and it won't be that big of a deal. In my opinion, between the different setups, if you're somebody that's just getting started, I think that the single camera setup is ideal because it can carry you a really long way. You can make everything look fantastic. And it also lets you focus more on the presentation and just kind of getting your stream organized and the structure of how you're running through everything without having to worry too much about the tech. But if you're like, hey, I'm trying to make this as good as I possibly can and I really want people to just have their socks knocked off when they come into my stream, then in that case, go for the more pro advanced setup. When it comes to live streaming, there's a lot to learn. I've been streaming for almost nine years now and I'm still learning new things all of the time that help me improve my streams and my presentation and all of that. Because of that, we have an entire playlist here on the StreamYard YouTube channel that will help you make your streams even better. I'll put that on the screen right now so you can go ahead and check that out. Thank you so much for watching. You can click into that video now and uh, I'll see you next time.